Hey guys and welcome back to my channel. Today is going to be a really fun video that's going to kind of start like my best and worst products kind of of the year. I have a few videos going over best products that will be coming because you know 2020 is nearing the end. So today's is going to be really fun and it's also a collab. So I'm going to be showing you guys my top five and bottom five products that I got in subscription boxes this year. Since you guys know, I'm kind of a subscription box junkie. I try out many different ones from BoxyCharm, Ipsy, FabFitFun, and I always unbox them here on my channel. And today's video is actually a collab with my friend Christina Brooke here on YouTube. I have been, I think I've been subscribed to her for probably a year now and she does a ton of product reviews which I think is where I found her but she also has this really cool series called Make Up Your Mind which I also love watching. It's a very good one if you guys are looking to maybe buy a palette but you're just not sure if you already have these colors in your collection because she will look at the swatches of a new release and she will go through her collection and like find exact shades to match the swatches. I don't know how she does it based off just a photo but somehow she can get like dead on with the colors. So I think that is such a cool thing and I'm sure it's super time consuming as well. So I love watching those videos from her. It's definitely like her most popular videos you guys should definitely watch. But she also recently started doing subscription boxes like Ipsy and BoxyCharm. So we thought that this would be a really fun video to do together. So I just narrowed it down to five worst and five best and I've actually found out some weird things about me that I would like to change <laughs> is number one, I seem to mostly use not even the makeup I get in boxes. I mostly use the skincare and the hair care stuff and the lifestyle things, it seems like. And for some reason, I just don't get excited about the makeup. I think it's just because I'm always buying so much and I don't buy myself as much skincare and hair care. So then when I get it in boxes, it's really exciting to me because I usually I like to pick out my own makeup. So I actually don't have that many makeup favorites, but I do have some makeup fails. It also is terrible, but I need to work on using my subscription box products more. I find myself just like, you know, I get it. I'm like, eh, I'm, it doesn't really excite me. So I'm just going to put it in a giveaway box. So you guys know, I did tons of giveaways this year with subscription box items and I just, I didn't even try them out and I would like to do better. And something I want to do is maybe start doing tutorials, um, a separate video, a tutorial every month using my subscription box items so I can really review them and not feel like I have to constantly always buy new, new product because I'm sure you guys get the boxes as well and you'd like to see the products in action. So I was terrible at that this year and I probably would have had even a better range of products in this video if I had tried out more but yeah that's going to be my goal for the new year. Anyways that's a little bit about me and some things I need to work on but I did manage to find some really good and really bad <laughs> products from my boxes this year so let's get into it. Let me start off with the worst ones and we can end on a good note. So I wrote everything down. A lot of them I decluttered already because that's just what I do. I don't like to keep things around in my collection but I do have a couple of things to show you. All right so <laughs> I don't know if I'm supposed to be ranking this in order. I'm not, I don't think this is going to be in order. It's just going to be five of the worst and five of the best, but all right, this BoxyCharm palette, <laughs> I'm sorry, but what were they thinking with this color scheme? I just, I don't understand. This was in, I think the March uh, BoxyCharm box, the regular box, and I'm just, I tried it out and I wasn't a huge fan of the colors the shadow quality, it was just not there. So I just, yeah, it's one of the, definitely the worst products and one of the worst palettes I've tried all year. And it's, I just don't understand it. Let me know if you guys got this. What are your thoughts? Did you keep this in your collection? Did you try it out? I mean, I feel like I created a fun look with this glitter, but I just don't really gravitate towards glitter shadows anymore. But yeah, this one was definitely a fail for me and definitely one of the worst products I got in my subscription boxes for sure. The next item, this is from KVD Vegan Beauty as it is now, but it was called Kat Von D. Um, it was her Inkwell eyeliner and I got a blue one and it was honestly beautiful. I did a whole look with it and I got so many compliments from you guys like on how the blue color just looked on my eyes and everything. So now I'm determined to go and buy a blue liquid liner that's actually a good formula because this formula is straight trash I'm sorry but 
<laughs> it was so bad. It took me, like, I had to go over it, I'm not even kidding, about 10 times to get, like, the full pigmentation. It, like, dries up so fast when you put it on the eye, and it almost, like, balls up as you're trying to smear this color on um, to do, like, a wing. So it like skipped, it wasn't fully pigmented, it was the weirdest texture ever. So I'm just going to throw a picture up here so you guys could see that because I don't have that anymore. But yeah, that, that was not a good one, but the color was gorgeous. So if you guys have any recommendations for just a royal blue eyeliner liquid that I could use, let me know. Okay, the next one I also don't have with me. I'll throw a picture up here. I got this in an Ipsy. Let's see, I wrote it down. I literally went through like all my videos the other day to see what products I got because I cannot keep track. But this was in my April Ipsy Ultimate box, which you guys know, Ultimate itself was a fail for 2020 in my opinion. I'm so excited for the new Ipsy X that's coming next year. Cannot wait to see what that's gonna be all about. But this was a face mask from the brand Bloom Effects. It was a brand new brand to me and I was so excited about it. It's called the Dutch Dirt Mask and they actually, I think they use like actual tulips in this mask. And this whole brand was like focused around Dutch things and I'm Dutch so I was like, oh, this is so cool. This mask, you guys, I just, I went ahead and tried it out. The smell was bad because it straight up like smelled like vodka. <laughs> Like, I'm pretty sure there was like 99% alcohol in this face mask. It was so strong that it like burned my eyes. It burned my face because of all the alcohol content. So it was pretty abrasive too. Like it had exfoliants in it. So all that combined just really did not mesh well with my face. I don't see how this could really be good for anyone's skin. So that kind of shocked me. And I was really sad about it because yeah, it kind of deterred me from this brand and purchasing future stuff from them because I'm like you know this isn't good for the skin like why why would I trust their other products like are they going to have good ingredients I don't know but like I don't mind alcohol and something here and there but when you can like smell it that's that's bad and it definitely made my face super super red so that was horrible <laughs> okay next up um this one I recently decluttered so I don't have it with me again but this was from Ciate London and we got a lot of Ciate in Ipsy and BoxyCharm this year, but this one was actually in an Ipsy bag. And it was cute, so I got this in the August Ipsy. This was their Watermelon Setting Powder. And I believe they recommended it actually for under the eyes. So I tried it a couple times, and honestly, it was very dry under my eyes, which is weird because it's actually supposed to be hydrating, but it made my under eyes look so wrinkled and cakey. It just it was not good, but it was such a cool product because um, it actually smelled a little bit like watermelon as well um, in the powder, but it was such a, like a fine, thin consistency. It just did not work for me. It w I wouldn't say it was like the worst of the worst, but it definitely was not something I wanted to reach for again, so I did go ahead and declutter that one pretty quick. I'm curious if you guys tried it and what you thought about it. But I was just really surprised by that being a hydrating powder that it would make my under eyes look so dry, which I usually don't have that issue. And then lastly, I do still have this one, but this is the Ilia foundation. I got this in BoxyCharm. I was so excited to try this out. Um, I don't know what month this was. This was fairly recently, like a few months ago, I believe. And I got like the full size and everything and I got a good color, but... This I did not care for, especially if you have oily skin. This is so, so greasy on me. It just did not work out. Um, but it is a serum skin tint, but it just felt very heavy on my skin. Like the second I put this on, I tried it a few times. I always just, I want to take it off right away. Something of it does not mesh well with my skin. I feel like it didn't blend well. It just kind of caked up, which is weird for a skin tint. So I just, I did not get along with this one. I'm curious if you guys liked it but definitely not oily skin friendly. I don't see how dry skin would like this either, being how cakey it looked and how hard it was to blend. It does have niacinamide, squalane, and hyaluronic acid, which is awesome, but I just, it didn't work for me, and it also has SPF, but I'm curious if you guys like that one. Right, I think that was the five products of the worst ones, and like I said, I definitely could have had more if I was better and tried out more things, but I do have some really good ones to share with you guys now, so let's get into that. So first up, let's talk about the Pharmacy Very Cherry Clean Makeup Melting Balm. And technically I tried the original, but I never had the cherry one. And I do like this one a lot. I love like scents. Like, I don't know, that's like my thing. You guys know I'm a huge fragrance junkie. I love 
perfume I love lotion and then this one has a slight hint of cherry which was nice it wasn't too overwhelming at all and it didn't really irritate my face so it has that light cherry smell it's like a pink inside and it works pretty much the same as the green clean it just really helps remove the makeup you guys could see I just started using it a few months ago and I've I'm really loving it to take the makeup off the pharmacy is so good so that one was definitely a winner I don't know if they still make the cherry but I would definitely pick up the cherry again over the green just because I love that cherry scent that kind of like perks me up a bit the next thing this is a hair product and these are small sizes so I'm surprised I included it in here but I truly did love them this year and I want to go ahead and buy the full size so they definitely got me there this is the Sol de Janeiro Brazilian shampoo and conditioner I was really excited to get this in BoxyCharm let's see I think I wrote what month I got that one yeah I got these in the July BoxyCharm and even though they did send a smaller size I was fine with that because I think they're like $25 each maybe full size which they probably wouldn't have included that in boxy and these like minis are like 12 but I really loved how this made my hair feel it was so good I love the Sol de Janeiro scent so that also is a deciding factor for me and why this made it to the top but I was a little bit concerned with trying these out just because Sol de Janeiro is mostly body care and sometimes I don't like when a brand is focused on one thing and then all of a sudden they add something else that's not like normal for them so I was like is this actually going to be good but I felt like it was super moisturizing hydrating I loved the conditioner made my hair feel super soft the shampoo did a good job as well it wasn't too greasy so overall I was very pleased with these and definitely want to pick up the full size so I was happy to get those and also the scent does linger in your hair next up this is a lip balm and surprisingly enough this was another like cheaper one like a $12 lip balm that I got but I love it it's so good this was from Tarte their sugar rush line it's their best bud lip butter balm in peony it has the cute little flower top and you guys can see I've used this a decent amount this I love the smell for one it smells like cake batter so yeah, if a lip balm smells really good. It also entices me to use it more, but it really makes the lips feel super good and soft. You guys know how sometimes lip balms, I feel like, are a scam. Because sometimes some of them, like, you'll apply it and then it actually makes your lips more dry so that you feel like you have to keep buying it, keep going through it. But this one, um, I feel like it actually is moisturizing, but I feel like a lot of lip balms actually can dry out the lips and that's like their marketing technique to get you to buy even more of them because you're constantly applying it, you're becoming addicted to it, and it's drying out your lips. I've had that with a few different ones, but this one's really great. I absolutely love this little tart one. I would definitely repurchase. And then here we have a makeup item that was amazing to get in BoxyCharm this year. Let's see, I did write this down. As you can see... A lot of my stuff came from BoxyCharm, so it seems that I always get this question if Ipsy or BoxyCharm is better. BoxyCharm does annoy me sometimes with some of the products they include, but for the most part, I do enjoy the products a bit more that they do include. So... This is the Too Faced Sugar Peach Wet and Dry Face and Eye Palette. They have been including a lot of Too Faced this year, but this is so beautiful. I actually went ahead and wore this today. It's stunning. This one, the highlight is a beautiful pearl tone. I have it on my cheekbones. And then I did mix these two blushes, Sugar Peach and Peach Pop. So these blushes are very shimmery though, so you definitely have to like the shimmer. I do have it on as blush just for like a glow and blush in one. And it does have this really pretty peach honey shade here so yeah this does have a lot of shimmer and glow but it is stunning and it smells like peaches and the quality is 10 out of 10 on this and I did get this one in a boxy charm this was in the January boxy charm premium I believe so then that leaves one more product for my best and I had to choose something from FabFitFun and I will say I did use a ton of my FabFitFun products this year like all the lifestyle favorites I really really liked so I try, I try not to include too much of that that's why I have a little bit of everything here from each box and a little bit of every category but FabFitFun really did win for me I would say for the year even though they only do four boxes I used like their lifestyle favorites like to name a few I, I got a little basket that I store all my cat toys in I got these silicone straws that I use all the time so they really did well for me but my favorite product 
that I got in FabFitFun, it was actually in my winter box, is this super cozy bathrobe. I love this so much. It is the softest, softest fabric and I could just be in this all morning. It's so nice just to get out of the shower, throw this on and then I could just get to work and I don't have to put like my real clothes on if I'm just editing stuff and I can be warm and cozy. This is by the brand Summer and Rose. And I think this retailed for like 80 bucks, and I got it in my $49 FabFitFun, which was well worth it. Um, also, it fit really nice as well. I don't know if these have sizes, but the fit was good. Sometimes I find with robes, they don't come in enough. So, yeah, I did get the large, and it fit perfect, and I'm just, I'm in love with it. It's the coziest thing ever, so probably my favorite thing all year that I got in a box honestly so that's actually it for this video I hope you guys enjoyed it kind of different I do plan on doing a couple more you know end of the year favorites we'll see I think I have one coming from TJ Maxx and just my all-time makeup faves I don't know if I want to do like a separate palette one I thought it would be also a good idea to go over all my Sephora purchases and kind of give mini reviews of everything I tried this year from Sephora um so there's a lot of things I want to do and we'll see if I have time for it and even I can put these videos in January as well but I think it's so much fun to just go over the best, some of the worst, um, a little bit of everything and yeah that's pretty much it for this video. Also make sure you go check out Christina Brooks video. I'm so curious to see what she put in hers and definitely keep me accountable next year. Uh, I'm going to be trying more of these products out and doing those tutorials for you because I think it would be really fun. I know sometimes I'm hesitant to do tutorials just because of the views. They're not as popular as some other videos, but I think I need to do it. I just need to do it and not worry about the views. So that is going to be it for this video. Thank you so much for watching. Christina's info is down below, and I'll see you guys in my next one. Bye, guys.